Hello, listeners. Jordan here. I just want to let you know that you can listen to Nighttime early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Include it with Prime. You are listening to the Nighttime Podcast. Hello, listeners, and welcome back to the Nighttime Podcast's listener-led Encounters with Creeps series. If you're new here, I'm Jordan Bonaparte, and Encounters with Creeps is a series in which my pal Madeleine Klein and I provide nighttime listeners a platform to share their many unpleasant experiences with people that they consider to be creeps. Tonight, Madeleine and I are going to present the 16th volume of listener-contributed stories of Encounters with Creeps. We're going to hear about creeps in strip clubs, creeps in car crashes, creeps who get touchy, creeps in Old Navy, naked creeps, creeps with skulls, a creep with a mini horse. It's a lot, to be honest. So let's not waste any time here. Let's get into another round of your encounters with creeps. Ms. Madeleine Klein, how are you doing over there? Oh, I'm I'm well. I don't think I have anything to complain about. I'm sure I could find something, okay. but nothing comes to the top of my head. We're back for volume 16 of our Creep Encounters, Encounters with Creeps series. And this is gonna be a very special one, I have a feeling. Well, our last one was definitely one of my favorites. So I'm looking forward to this. I just feel like they, it gets better every time. And that's because I think we're getting better at unpacking and sharing the stories. But I also think unintentionally, people listening, it, it's almost like the show and the series is shaping itself. So people listening are kind of reacting to what's being said and sharing their stories that are just kind of picking up where the people on the prior volume have left off. And it's just without us even intentionally doing it, the ball is just continuing to roll in a specific direction. And it's fantastic. <laughs> it is. Uh, tonight's stories are very good. But as we always do, I want to start off this episode with a modern day in the news creep encounter from Canada. And something happened last week that I don't I didn't want to tell you about this because I wanted it to be fresh. But I've been dying to talk to you about this case. Uh, this is the story about uh, a man named Adam Desker. Uh, he was, I, I say was, because he's probably lost his job already. If he hasn't, he's going to any minute now, <laughs> I would assume, I hope. He was a paramedic in Toronto, but in July of 2023, something really creepy happened involving Adam Desker at a strip club in Kitchener. And the incident was so unhinged that it has led to him being banned from strip clubs all around the region. And it has led to him being in the news for being such a creep. Here's what Adam Desker got up to at a strip club in Kitchener called Roxanne's. Spelt with not one X, not three X's. He went with two X's. If the if the strip club is going to be named Roxanne's, put three X's That's in it. That's definitely a place, missed right? opportunity. It wasn't a night Jennifer Mary expected to go into work at Roxanne's, a Kitchener strip club. But last July, she says Adam Desker, a regular, requested for her to come in. We made a deal that I would come in on the condition that he gave me a certain amount of money. She said it's common to exchange numbers with regulars so they can plan their hours around visits. But during this particular shift, she noticed something was off. His phone was propped up against like the bottle that he had bought. And I picked up the phone and he was recording. With the club's strict rules against filming, she confronted him. He got extremely like upset and irate and he said, okay, you're right, just smash the phone, smash it. Desker was kicked out, but his phone remained. The following night, Mary was able to unlock the device. And there was 96,000 photos in his phone of just all kinds of women. As she continued to scroll what she saw, she could never have imagined. So the first thing that I saw was just like the couple videos of me that he had taken that night. So then then I just started seeing other women that I work with. I saw women I didn't know. So there was photos of me like drinking coffee and he like he had superimposed his like penis into the photos to make it look like I was giving him oral sex. He had photos of my coworkers with like bruises on them that he had he had photoshopped into these pictures. So when you opened the phone and saw the contents of it, what was your reaction? When I saw what he had done <laughs> to the women that I work with, 
that bothered me the most. It's weird how a person can have like a certain threshold for things that happen to them, but when you see something happen to somebody else, it's horrible. What she found didn't end there. She says Desker made many people at Rock Sands aware he was a longtime paramedic in Toronto. So one folder on his phone stood out. He had folders called, you know, Toronto EMS Life and Times. And then you go into it and there's wounded people. There was like a photograph of a woman who was deceased and topless. She called police and Desker was eventually arrested and charged with voyeurism. He was also charged with criminal harassment for repeatedly contacting her. A City of Toronto spokesperson confirmed to CTV News he is an employee of Toronto Paramedic Services, but says he's currently out of the workplace and has been for some time. We are aware of the allegations. When it happened, I notified all the women that I work with and then all the neighboring clubs. He was released on the condition that he didn't go to Roxanne's or any adult entertainment establishment. But in November 2023, he broke that release order and was caught at the manor in Guelph. Although many months have passed and Mary no longer works at Roxanne's, she's still disturbed. He would use his medical knowledge to kind of make instill fear in me. I am afraid of him. I never want to see him ever again. The allegations about the content found on Desker's phone have not been proven in court, but Mary hopes taking action sparks change. Well, 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 well. Oh my God. There's so much in that. That story, as it unfolds, it just gets worse and worse and worse. I was just going to say that. Where do we start with this? I don't know. So like at first, so first 96,000 photos, that's a lot of storage mm. space. Uh, yeah. What kind of phones this guy good got? Grief. But And then, so I thought, I was like, that's a lot of photos to have of like unknowing, you know, strippers, but then it just it can continue to get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And the, the photos are one thing. Having 96,000 random photos of of women, uh, strippers, and whoever else. Well, that's bizarre that's he one got thing. away with it for so long. Because, like, you shouldn't be taking a selfie with your friend in the strip club. Like, phones are a big no-no. That's a big no-no. You don't pull out a phone there. You especially don't. And who would try to get away with something like that at a strip club? You would get your ass kicked for being out of line at a strip club in Kitchener, Ontario. Oh, God. But this guy... He, he thought he could get away with it, but the pictures are one thing, but the whole like photoshopping them, putting right. his penis in the picture, you know, and when, when he says like, she says, uh, there was a photo of me drinking a coffee, he superimposed his penis so it looks like I was giving him oral sex. I was like, oh my God, like this guy's a nut. But then it gets to the next part and she's like, and then I seen other dancers where he like photoshopped bruises on them. And that's- But this guy's a paramedic. That's where it like got super dark. It's like yeah it's like, what what is this paramedic so you're not just like a, a creep but you're a dangerous creep yeah and then you know he has uh the folder she described as like uh his his work life and times thing having photos of people who were injured and she says and if this is true i have no reason to doubt her but if this is true this is nuts is the idea of him having photos of like a dead topless woman on the same phone that he has strippers with bruises superimposed like this guy needs to be looked at oh that's like a huge hipaa violation which is like the healthcare privacy act oh be, yeah but it's also like a massive like i don't know serial killer red flag right it's just, yeah just everything like you said it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse mm -hmm. yeah uh i took uh, this article that we just listened to that was from about two weeks ago i look for updates the most recent update is that in about a week's time there, there's going to be some kind of court motion happening um where it's going to be revealed how much they were able to the investigators were able to get off of his phone and i guess the, the charges are going to kind of like live and die on their ability to get everything off the phone which i'm like the, the history of the phone is kind of interesting like how did if it was locked how did she somehow manage to open it well i wonder if one of the dancers knew his password just from like looking or who knows yeah who knows but and then i also wonder if that can impact their case if they go into his phone unlawfully and find this stuff can it like taint the evidence i hope not because i like I mean, I, like i said i just hope they get this guy knowing or finding out his password isn't illegal no that's true so i don't know i'll be interested to find out how this plays out yeah um and of course he gets 
caught not long after getting told he can't go to strip clubs at a strip club, which just shows, you know, this is probably doing the same old, same old. Oh, yeah. With a new phone. Oh, yeah. Yuck. Uh, well, that is our modern day creep. And so what we're doing here on Encounters with Creeps is we've opened the door for listeners of the Nighttime Podcast to share with us stories of the times. I, I was going to say the time they encountered creeps, but a lot of people share multiple stories. So we invited listeners to share stories of the many times, usually, they've encountered creeps out there in the wild. Uh, we're now on volume 16. We've been through God knows how many creep stories and there is no end in sight. Tonight we have another batch, and it is a very entertaining at times, very disturbing at some other times. Uh, we got it all. Let's, um, I didn't come up with any specific theme, so let's just jump right in. Let's go to Florida. It's, Florida can't disappoint. Oh, uh, we're starting off well. We got back-to-back stories in Florida. Let's start with Krista's Car Crash Creep in Florida. Hi, my name is Krista Marie. I am a very big fan of your show. And this story is about one of the many creeps that I have unfortunately encountered. Um, I'm originally from Northern Michigan, but this one takes place in Florida. I am driving my way home from work um, in my scrubs because I had spent well over a decade working within the dental field and it is starting to rain. I'm rushing home because we have a Tampa Bay Lightning hockey game to go to. And I'm still in scrubs. I still need a shower because working in people's mouths is disgusting and you're always covered and like you feel like a film of nastiness. And as I am driving, um, there's this car that pulls up next to me in the next lane and then cuts around me and then slams on their brakes. And unfortunately, I bump into their bumper. There's no major damage. I get out, oh my God, I'm so sorry. He, this guy looks about my same age as me, gets out, oh my gosh, it's okay. You know, he's being very, very nice about it. And all it is is just a scuff mark on the back bumper of his car. And the bumper on my car is fine. But regardless, I give him all of my insurance information. He gives me all of his insurance information and everything's fine. So the next day, um, I get up in the morning and I have a Facebook message. It's the guy that I bumped into on my way home before the hockey game. And he sends me this great big long message about how he thinks I'm so beautiful and he's so sorry about the way that we had met, that it was mainly his fault for slamming on his brakes and that, um, and that he would like, he would love nothing more than to put it all behind us and start anew and go out on a date together. He wants to take me out. So I respond, you know, um, thank you, you know, th- for the compliments and everything. And thank you for being so civil. But I am in a serious committed relationship. I am married and I have, I have a daughter. So um, thank you, but no thank you. All of a sudden, I get like all these angry messages about how he's going to make me pay. He's going to wish that uh, he not that I never met him and then I'm like whatever I just block the guy ignore the guy and a few weeks later I am leaving work and I have my car insurance company calling me telling me that this guy is saying that he has neck and back injuries and I completely demolished the back of his car I was smart enough during the accident to take pictures and I was smart enough to save the messages So I took screenshots of them and sent everything over to my insurance company and my insurance company luckily had handled that and I didn't have to deal with any kind of repercussions or anything to that nature because even if he did slam on his brakes in front of me, the fact that I hit his bumper from behind would automatically put me at fault. So 
um, by having that information and saving all of those messages, it definitely saved my skin. But it is kind of uncomfortable how these entitled these creeps feel as if they can be. But thank you. I love your show. Please keep up the good work. I just feel like a creep will find any opportunity to try to like turn it into something like romantic or sexual to get in a car accident, exchange insurance information and use that as your way to like try to connect with them. I think, you know, that's a really big move. If it works out like that'd be a great way to meet your like husband or whatever. But if it doesn't, and then you immediately turn it to like, well, I'm going to get you. Like, and like how God. embarrassing to have your insurance company call you back and be like, so we have receipts. We've got the screenshots <laughs> that you sent her admitting fault, like slamming on your brakes. And asking her out. Oh, uh, I wonder mm -hmm. if he did that on purpose. Because she said at first she he, he was beside her. And I wonder if he looked over and was like, she's hot. Mm. And then like, well swerved in front yeah. of her One, yeah slammed on his brakes it's like what a way to meet someone we you know it it would i wouldn't put it past people it's oh no it gets you in it, you see an attractive girl driving next driving next to you that puts you in a position where you're like alone talking and maybe if you know like the rules and you know that like if she rear ends me she's got to pay like it's it's on her so Go out it with then me puts pay. you in <laughs> it then puts you in like a little weird position of power against them. Maybe. Like I, I do feel like if you did this, if you did that to 10 people, one or two would probably take you up on it. Oh, yeah. But not mm -hmm. in. Yeah, I was going to say not in the day of like uh, dash cams. I don't think he could do that mm -hmm. with so many people mm -hmm. having dash cams. But you're yeah. right. I mean, I'm sure if you did it to 10 people, at least one or two, you'd get a date out of Oh, there's got to be a better way though to meet women. Just try it at the grocery store or something. Try like, Tinder. You know, do anything else. <laughs> except, yeah, except tricking them into nailing your car. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Let's stick around in Florida. This is an this is an interesting one. This involves a creep that gets a little touchy, but this is going to be one of those stories where the victim of the creep encounter defends herself, and the whole thing just gets. That gets ugly. Listen to this. Hello, everybody. I am calling from the States. Specifically, I am calling from Florida with an Encounters with Creeps story. Um, as I am calling from Florida, this should be interesting. I don't know how it will measure up to other Florida stories that have been submitted, but this is my encounter with the dreaded Florida man. Um, because I consider any man who has done anything creepy in Florida to become an amalgamation of the larger Florida man. It is all one. They become hive mind and they're all creepy. Um, I've had multiple encounters with the Florida man, but the one that stands out was one that happened a few weeks ago. I was at a dinner with my mom and it was a fair, it's a fairly casual dining area, diner. And we were sitting at this low top table kind of in the middle of everything, you know, there are a lot of people walking around. Um, and I was just having a conversation with my mom, very casual. Uh, I should probably preface this with saying I am 23 years old. So two adult women just chatting at a table when all of a sudden I feel a tug on my hair. So in context, I do have very long hair and I was wearing it in like a half ponytail with a bow. And I felt somebody pull like my ponytail. And I will admit at first, this is an area that my mom has lived in for a little while now and there are, she has a lot of friends in the area. And so I thought, oh, maybe it's one of her friends just kind of messing with me. And so I turned around expecting one of her friends and it's just this random man being escorted to his table by the hostess. And he continues walking and I'm like, okay, that's weird. You absolute creep. And he's got a friend behind him. And that is obviously, that would that's where I would have ended. I would not have actually interrogated him if he hadn't said what he did say which is oh you know I had to do it when you see a pretty girl you just it's irresistible I've been doing it since I was in kindergarten and that was when I was like excuse me and I don't know what the look on my face was but his friend started to be very embarrassed again these are two older men he makes some comment of oh we're, we're gonna take him back to the nursing home and he's trying to push his friend away but his friend stops dead in his tracks and looks at me and he's just like 
what, are you mad or something? And my mom is suddenly realizing what's happened. And she looks at me, she's like, did he touch you? And I said, yeah, he pulled my hair. And I look at him and I say, that was creepy. You pulled my hair. I don't know you. And I said it somewhat loudly. So now we have all of these people <laughs> in the dining room staring at us. And the man's just looking at me. He's just like, I, I, I just pulled your hair. Like, it's just, it's teasing. It's fine. And I'm like, you're a creepy old man. That wasn't okay. I do not know you. And his friend is at this point, like hitting him on the back being like, go. And the man, his friend turns to me and he says that he's sorry. And they walk off and leave. And pretty much the rest of the next 20 minutes of my life was spent with people at the neighboring tables being like, he touched you? And I said, yes. And they were all very confused and also creeped out by this man. And it ended with when my mom and I were leaving the restaurant, we had to go down the stairs to leave. And he was coming up because the bathrooms were downstairs. And he does not even look at me at all. And it was very awkward and very horrible. And there was a part of me that I felt a little bad about embarrassing him for like half a second. Because he did seem like he genuinely, I don't know. I don't know what goes on in men's heads when they think that they can just put their hands on a woman. Like, I don't know. And the fact that I still, as I'm telling this story, I'm like, well, maybe he didn't know better. He was like in his 60s. But it's just, it's just weird. Don't touch people. Like, I don't know. I don't know if anyone needs to hear that out there. Like, it's just creepy. All right. Have a good day. Bye. That was a roller coaster. I like her. <laughs> I he, do need, too. he needed to hear it because clearly mm -hmm. he's been getting away with it for way too long. Just yeah, pawing at random women. Pulling at your pretty girl's hair. Yeah. Uh, it, that could have worked out way worse for him. Oh, yes. Luckily. He just got embarrassed, maybe, but he, this guy, like the guy who would do that is such a, like a self-centered scumbag that he probably thought she was unreasonable. Well, exactly. Well, and I guarantee you, he wouldn't have done that if she was sitting with a man. I'm glad she did what she did. Oh, absolutely. I bet he won't yeah. be tugging any stranger's hair anymore. Weirdo. Yeah. That, uh, Florida never disappoints. Come on. Oh. Oh, and oh, I just I'm thinking about like his poor nieces and or daughters and like he's he probably does it to everyone, including strangers, as we just learned. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Weirdo. Let's leave the United States. We'll leave Florida. I think we're actually heading very close to your house. I think we're go we're going to Saskatchewan. I think we're going to Regina. Close you may recognize. <laughs> well, you'll see why. I think you may recognize his voice. It's been nice. I'm going to call this story, Krista the Cleaner Can't Clean This. Here it comes. Hey, Madeline and Jordan. It's Krista calling from Regina. I'm not sure if I'm a creep now, but I binge listened to all of the Encounters with Creeps episodes in the past few days. And of course, uh, brings up memories of additional stories. So I used to clean houses on the side Um Quite frequently, I had a, a number of regular clients and, and such. And I, when I first started, I put an ad, I think, on used Regina. And then most of my clients ended up being word of mouth. But anyways, this person contacted me. And my clients were around, like, around Regina. It's not a big city, but, I mean, still, like, worked full time, cleaned on the side. So this person lived, like, down the block from me. So I thought, you know what, this would be good. It'd be was a smaller place, but I would always set up at a meeting with clients to like meet with them, see their property. If I ended up being their cleaner, then I would get a key and you know, all that kind of stuff. So set up a meeting with this guy. And um, so I get there and then he, you know, was just telling me that he has a roommate, but his roommate's hardly ever home and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, can you, and, and he said, um, he goes, and I don't know if this will bother you or not, but I'm a nudist. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Like, I don't know what that has to do with anything. I'm going to be here cleaning and you're not going to be here. So it doesn't matter. So he excuses himself for a minute and comes back into the living room or kitchen or wherever. And he's naked. Um, <laughs> super strange. And what's 
even stranger, I think, is like, I didn't feel threatened. It was just so weird. And he's like, you know, does this make you uncomfortable? Would it be a problem if I was home? And blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, mm, well, it kind of is better for me if the client isn't home because then, you know, I'm not, you're not underfoot. I'm not underfoot, whatever. But um, it was just like, I sort of... Uh, made an excuse and, and like scooted out of there and, uh, declined the offer to be his cleaner. But, uh, it, it like, like I said, it was strange is that I did not feel threatened in any way. It was just super weird. So I don't know if it was a kink of his, is that he was trying to shock me or, you know, something, but, um, creepy, weird, I don't know, call it what you want. Um, but I mean, I didn't advertise as a cleaner that would show up wearing a French maid costume or anything like that, um, you know, or nudist only, like, I'm your gal, nothing to that effect. But anyways, um, yeah, people are strange. That's all I got. Okay. Have a great one, guys. Thanks so much. Love what you do. Take care. Bye-bye. I'll let you take the lead on this one. <laughs> oh, my God. I, have you ever heard that story? I have. <laughs> she, yeah. um, maybe about a month ago, she told me. Uh, that's my, okay. for anyone that doesn't know, that's my stepmom. This is Madeline's stepmom, yeah. <laughs> uh, our, our most loyal listener. She sent a lot of creep encounters. I don't know what it is about your stepmom, but she has seen a lot in her in her years. Seriously. She has so many good stories to tell. I just... I love her. <laughs> In, including the nudist potential client for a cleaner. Uh, it takes us some serious guts, uh, I guess, or, or lack of hinge to <laughs> just strip naked while you're going through like kind of a consultation with a host cleaner. I just, I, I don't understand, like Krista, I don't understand the motive. Like, if... <laughs> If it was, you know, that big of uh, like a, a deal or whatever, why wouldn't he have mentioned it in the phone call or email prior to her coming over? Why mm -hmm. didn't he answer the door naked? Why? I just don't understand it's what, true. what the motive was. <laughs> well, I think there's a, there's a lot of creeps who, like I just like with the car accident, they'll use any opportunity to try to turn it into something romantic or sexual or whatever. I, I feel like this guy just had a woman alone in his house, a captive audience. I guess there's nothing – I don't know if he's done anything illegal by doing that. He is in his own home, and maybe you're allowed to do that. But I, I just – like I think this guy was just like taking a crazy chance, I guess, seeing what would happen. Well, right. Uh, it's, it's certainly creepy. Oh, absolutely. But mm -hmm. I wonder if that approach has ever worked. Man, you'd have to be. I well, I don't know. I, I I was gonna say you'd have to be desperate, but maybe there's someone who's like sweet, like a crazy naked guy. See, well, right, and I don't know. I just like I'm all I'm very constantly surprised at how casual some people do have sex. Like I remember years ago, I think I was still I for sure was still in high school, but I was talking to a friend of mine who was quite older than me. And he told me about a time where he was like walking to work or something. And then some girl pulled over, picked him up and they ended up like sleeping together just in that, like one little interaction. And I was like, huh, wow. interesting. Very well, interesting. So <laughs> when, when, two, when two creeps cross paths, I like, guess humans are fascinating. No, to, to each their own, whatever, to, no, whatever no blows shame your here, skirt but up. exactly. But with this guy, I can't, come up with any other explanation except it's some weird kink fetish sort of thing. And ha I think hi him projecting or him putting it on someone unexpectedly. Yeah. That's, that's seriously wrong. Just like our dear glove guy here in Halifax. Like it's one thing to have this bizarre leather glove fetish, but don't trick people into getting alone with you and then tell them about it. He should put yeah. an ad in the paper. Like I'm a nudist and I'm looking for someone to come here and pretend to clean my house as I like, masturbate Watch while them. naked around them or <laughs> something like i don't know what this guy's looking for but uh, here's here's a a little bonus uh part of your stepmom's story <laughs> she uh, she after so she leaves that voicemail 
And just as I'm kind of reacting to it, another voicemail comes in. Uh, she just has some additional thoughts. So I'm going to name this section. Uh, Krista's, it's going to be called Krista the Cleaner Can't Clean This Addendum. Krista's Deep Thoughts. Listen to this. Hi, Elaine and Jordan. It's Krista from Regina again. So something that occurred to me is with this guy, it wasn't like he had the plastic sheets all over his furniture, like, you know, old fashioned grandma's had it never once did I contemplate cleaning for this guy once all of that came about. But now that I think about it, I was like, I would have had to charge a lot more for all of the safety protection gear that I would have needed, like extra gloves and hazmat suit and whatever, because wherever this guy's sitting, if he's sitting in the nude, um, that's just nasty. But Anyways, I uh, thought I would just share that with you in addition and give you a giggle. Deep thoughts by Krista. Um, yeah, so weird, hey? Yeah, uh, so I don't, I don't know if you want to say anything about yeah. that, but I think she has a good point. I, I, I think like a 15% surcharge at least would be justified. Oh, at least. Deep thoughts <laughs> because we need to deep clean. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is something else oh, um God. but yeah which if if any cleaner out there took him up on his offer i hope they did at, apply um a, a deep cleaning surcharge because yeah this that whole thing is nasty well i've noticed that um lots of people that call in with their creep stories lots of them have been cleaners in some way hotel house whatever because when you go into like someone's house, especially it's like them in their mm. natural habitat mm, where they're comfortable. Yes. Yeah. They're comfortable. Mm. And if the door's closed. You're alone. Yeah. No one can hear. They didn't have, you just... even have to lure you in. They came in on, on the thought that, you know, they're just working. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, we hear a lot of a lot of cleaners. Like, what are some of the occupations we hear? We hear a lot of bar staff, kind of server type people, uh, cleaners. Uh, we've heard a lot of retail. Oh yeah, a lot of retail. Um, I'm surprised we don't hear from more like nurses or mm. or just healthcare professionals because patients can be so weird sometimes. Well, we have heard from a few nurses. I think. Uh, uh, there was one story I, I don't recall, like maybe it was two or three episodes ago, but it was um, the nurse who the creep was like another kind of caregiver. If you oh, remember, there yes. was like a dying man. Uh, yeah. I don't remember the exact details, but we have gotten that. Let's go to um, this isn't necessarily a retail worker, but I have a story from Louisiana, a listener named Brittany. Uh, she had a really bad time at Old Navy. <laughs> Listen to this one. <laughs> Hey y'all, uh, my name is Brittany from Louisiana. I have been listening to the Creep episodes and I just wanted to submit and tell you guys about my experience. Um, almost a year ago, exactly, I was shopping for my mom and went to Old Navy and it was like a little bit before closing. I was kind of walking around and there was a guy that kept kind of running into me a little bit. And he would give me like a little like smile, like you just seem nervous. And, um, so after a little while, I went in the fitting rooms and I was obviously changing. Um, and all of a sudden, I just had just this gut feeling that I needed to look up. And when I did, I actually saw his phone over the top of the fitting room and he was recording me. Um, my, it's so crazy because until you're in the situation, you truly have no idea what you will do. And luckily kind of my fight or flight kicked in and I screamed and excuse me French, but I was like, what the fuck are you doing? And I flung open the door. Mind you, I'm in half old Navy, half my clothes. And he was shaking and freaking out and I made him delete everything. Um, and I was running out the store cause he was running as well, like running through the store and I was yelling at the employees of what just happened and they couldn't catch him in time. They couldn't lock the door in time. They locked it right after he left and we did call the police and they came luckily quickly, but they never did find him. Um, unfortunately with situations like this, I feel like it kind of is just like a drop in a bucket. It's until it happens again, probably won't find him. But yes, I just wanted to tell you all about my creepy experience. And well, Navy needs to get better walls.
because that was literally traumatizing and the worst thing ever. Bye, y'all. When I think of the Old Navy in Halifax, I feel like the, it's not necessarily a changing room as it is this kind of like almost like a shower where you pull like a curtain around or something. Um, I've seen those. I yeah, but maybe but actually now that I th now that I say that, I think there is a separate section that is an actual changing room where you would go like kind of like a stall. You would okay. go in and I, and I think like some retail stores they'll have kind of this area where there's like a couple changing rooms and there's an employee there kind of staff to like help people like get in and out. I wonder if that's because like, are they trying to reduce theft or are they trying to keep the whole thing organized or are they trying to pe get people like this creep from coming in and sticking their phone underneath or over top of the little stall door? It's probably a little bit uh, of all of those columns. Yeah, I would think. Um, it's, yeah, it's crazy. It, if you remember uh, a while back as well, one of the modern day creeps yes. we started a show with was in Halifax at a thrift store. One of the employees was caught uh, sticking his phone underneath right, the changing room. It was an room. employee. Oh, yeah. I forgot about and, he, that. And, he, and then when they confronted him, he had a whole bunch of videos of random women changing in the changing rooms at this thrift shop. Uh, people do that. And she says, like, I got him to delete it. But, you know, when you delete stuff, it just goes in a different folder and just sits there. This this right. pervert got away with it is the way I see it. Oh, definitely. And like how many other, how many times has he gotten away with it before when yeah, people I, haven't told him to delete whatever he just got? I think like with most crimes, it's, you know, it slowly ramps up. So I'm sure this guy started with like, you know, taking pictures of like some pretty girl drinking a coffee at the coffee shop and he's taking it from the other side of the room. And then it was like, it, it builds up. He, you know, yeah. takes a picture of someone on the street from up close. But it, when it gets to the point that you're like reaching your hand over the change room stall door, like this guy, he's, he is not new to voyeurism oh, no. and whatever that you would call this it's uh these are the kinds yeah, of guys I, that like take pictures of like up women's skirts just yeah. out in public and ugh. it's yeah it's with phot photography and being so accessible on our phones and all this stuff like yeah creeps are going to take advantage of that and it's, that's disgusting that something like this could happen and man like I would be traumatized like if I was her I'd be Trump Britney I'd be traumatized that it happened but I feel like it, I'd feel even worse by the fact that the guy got away and managed to get out of the store oh, without the yes. cops getting him. That would just chew me up. I would just be driving around that neighborhood for months hoping to see this guy again. I'd be asking like for security footage to be pulled. And yeah. I'd be like, I would like to publicly shame him on Facebook. So if you could pull that footage. Thanks. Yeah, I love when that stuff happens on Facebook, when, when when someone shares like a security photo and be like, if anyone knows who this is, this guy did blah, 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 blah. Um, well, and especially one, if, if, in somewhere so small like Regina, someone always knows mm, them. <laughs> like, yeah, it's the same. And like what I like where I'm from in Sydney, Cape Breton, it's the oh. same kind of thing, a small town. There'll be like a photo of someone who was like, you know, carrying like a, I don't know, a microwave out of Walmart that they stole or something. <laughs> and, you know, it'll be like, if anyone has any information on this shoplifting suspect and like the second comment is someone like tagging the yeah, guy in, exactly. the, in the photo. <laughs> I love that. He does this all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I wish it happened with this guy. If uh, Old Navy would have security cameras too. It's hopefully something like this happened because it needs to be taken seriously but i'm also very surprised at how many times something does happen theft whatever usually theft um and like it's 2024 and the, the security footage it looks like it was it was taken on a toaster i know exactly what you mean well let's get to the end of this i have two stories oh man they're both good do you want to talk about a human skull or a mini horse oh well give me the skull This story is called Noah, the Pedophile, and the Human Skull. <laughs> I'm, I pick right. <laughs> and I like this one because it takes place at, I shouldn't say I like it. This one attracted me to it because it, that sounds worse. <laughs> this one takes place at a garage sale and I love garage sales. Here it I goes. was just garage sailing today. Yeah, I just have a little creep story. Shucks, I must have been like six years old at the time. This guy across the street was having a garage sale. And uh, I went across, uh, my parents could like see the house or whatever, so it was no big deal. 
And uh, he had these like Ripley's Believe It or Not books, and I grabbed them off of him. For, that was pretty cool for me. I was a bit of an odd kid, so like that like weird macabre kind of stuff. I was into it. But then I, I went home, dropped them off, and then come back, and this guy's talking to me, and he goes, "Yeah, I have a uh, a human skull if you want it." And he's probably like thirty five, kind of disheveled looking guy. And for whatever reason, as a kid, I was like, "Yeah, man, like let me take a look at that." And so I got it and I brought it home. My mom looked at it and she went, Noah, you, you can't, you can't have that. We got to call the police. And they called the police. And I was like, like I said, young. And I had to do a police interview alone. And I still remember this too afterwards. It was the first time my mom ever let me get a full Big Mac meal by myself for McDonald's. But I do an interview and they talk to my mom and they go, first of all, like, there's no way for you to know this because we're Canadian, right? But that guy's a pedophile. Like we don't have a registry that you guys can see, but we can see that that guy's a pedophile who lives there. So he shouldn't be talking to your son, but it's not like a murder skull. It was stolen. I think it had some markings on it or something so they could tell. So it was stolen from like a health institute, like a research place. But yeah, and then that guy moved out pretty, pretty soon after. But that was my encounter with a creep. And it was also, like I said, the first time I ever had a full Big Mac meal. So it wasn't a complete loss. (laughs) That's how he ends it. Oh, man. I'm so glad I picked that one. That's that's something else, but it's... a lot of people have garage sales for different different reasons, but I do feel like if you go to a bunch of garage sales, there's kind of a certain type of person that has a garage sale. And if, if you spend a lot of time at garage sales or flea markets or thrift shops, you meet a lot of interesting people. Um, this doesn't entirely surprise me that it went there, but it's just – for this all to happen at once, uh, oh my goodness. This... Imagine donating your body to science just for your skull to end up in the hands of a pedophile. A pedophile's garage sale? Yeah. yeah it's like, yeah, like you're dying. This is not what I it's like, donated gonna, this for. <laughs> I don't want, you know, the, the disease that I have or whatever. It's like, I want to stop it. I'm going to just do the right thing and donate my body to science, change the world. You end up in an institute, like in a lab, a research place, and then someone steals you somehow. And yeah, yeah, you end up in a pedophile's garage sale. Some kids getting interviewed in a police station. Oh, that poor kid. But, I, re- yeah. I really like how he told it, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like uh, when, when he told this part about like, and that was the first time my parents got me like a bit, my own Big I, Mac I, meal. <laughs> they were like, they were like, he's been, he's had a day. We just got to do something nice for him, Dorothy. Just let him have the whole <laughs> Get him a Big, Big Mac, Mac meal. <laughs> <laughs> well, it did help. I'm sure as he was eating that Big Mac, he was not thinking about skulls or anything. Well, just like, this is like awesome. he was just so innocent throughout all of this. Yeah. Like he and the poor kids probably sitting alone with the police, which absolutely shouldn't have happened. But yeah, yeah he's probably like, yeah just my weird neighbor <laughs> he was having a garage sale <laughs> yeah he's got some, he has a bunch of ripley's believe it or not books in a skull Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. well uh noah isn't the only one to run into a pedophile olivia appears to as well this one will end with this this is olivia's creep who she encountered on the way to school Hey, Nighttime Pod. You guys are great. I wanted to tell a story about my encounter with a creep when I was 11 years old, growing up in the Pacific Northwest in Washington State. Uh, I would get off at my bus stop and then walk about three quarters of a mile uh, to get to my house. And it was all down this long gravel path. Uh, This was kind of in a farming community. And there were several times that I would see this man probably in his 50s and heavier set with his mini horse. But I never saw him really up close. He was always in the tall grass kind of behind things. Um, but one day, probably after the 10th time, he came up to me and asked if I wanted to pet his mini horse. And of course I did. Uh, that's like any little girl's dream. So I'm petting this mini horse and I should note that I looked a lot younger than 11 at the time. I probably looked like I was eight and he was asking me about how old I was. And I remember when I told him I was 11, he kind of seemed disappointed and it didn't really register for me until later. Like why that might be. Um, but I was, you know, telling him about, I love the horse and he asked if I wanted to ride it. And I do remember I was wearing the skirt that day and I kept thinking, okay, well I could ride this horse, but I just need to be really careful about being modest and like, you know, being mindful of that. So I did ride his mini horse and I'm probably riding it for like one to two minutes before I look over and realize that he's taking pictures of me. Um, and that was enough to raise a little bit of an alarm in my small brain of, oh, that's probably not right. I should get off this horse and go home. 
So I hopped off and said, thank you so much. And he said, wait, 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 don't go. Uh, would you be wanting to ever come over? I'd pay you to help take care of my horses. I have more horses and stables. And I just knew I shouldn't be talking to him anymore. And so I said, no, I have to get going. My parents are waiting for me, even though no one was at my house. Um, and I tried to hurry out of there and get to my house. And I hoped he didn't see which house I lived in. I left it at that. Um, but I did feel a bit icky about it. And I didn't tell my parents because I thought I might get in trouble. Um, and then a few days later, right around the same time that I would normally be getting home when my parents were never home and I was there alone, uh, there's a knock at the door. And I can see through the side window that it's him. So as I'm standing there, it just happens to be the one day that week that my dad had like a doctor's appointment or something. So he was home. So he came up to the door and opened it and I could tell it caught the guy off guard. He started to talk to my dad and saying, hey, I met your daughter the other day. She seemed to really connect with my mini horse. I was wanting to see if she would want to come over and help out at the stables. I would pay her. And as my dad's talking to him, my dad obviously is having all these alarm bells going off. He sees that the man's holding photos of me on the horse in a little skirt. And I could tell from my dad's face uh, that he was not happy. So my dad stepped outside and shut the door behind him. I couldn't hear the rest of the conversation, but I could see that my dad was just ripping into this guy. Uh, my dad came back inside with the pictures that he had taken from him. And I got a very strong lecture on do not talk to strangers, do not ride mini horses that you don't know, and the like. He also told me if I ever saw this guy again to call my parents and call the police. Um, so that was that. When I got a little bit older, I found out that my dad had um, obviously knew this guy had bad vibes and bad motives uh, and essentially just told him if he ever saw him again near me or any other children or in our neighborhood uh, that he would end him. So glad my dad was able to step in and nip that in the bud. Um, and I'm glad I relatively came out of that unscathed because it could have been a lot worse. Um, but I hate to say as an adult, I probably would still be tricked into petting or riding someone's mini horse because they're just so cute. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> I've never saw a mini horse. Is that like a, you know, you hear of a pony, which is like a tiny little horse. Yeah, that's what I'm I'm assuming. Okay, that's, uh, that's what I'm going to go with. But that was a trip. Thank God dad was home to answer the door. And I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall for whatever conversation happened on that front step that ends with dad getting the photos. I like how guy. he stepped outside. He's like, mm. yeah, he's just like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. One sec. <laughs> Shuts the door so she doesn't hear it. Oh, um, my God. This creepy, eh? That one, like she said, that like that could have ended a lot worse. It's still yeah. like so and creepy and wrong, but oh. Every bit of it is a creep encounter. Like even like she saw this guy all the time with his mini horse, but he was usually in the tall grass or kind of behind something. When she said that, I'm like, okay, so this is just, what is he, a scarecrow? Like <laughs> this creep? And just waiting then, for kids to walk by to, yeah, and use and his mini he, horse to lure them in. Well, and it seems that's what she what he did because she he gets her on the way home from school. Like, why does this farmer sounding guy have a camera and a mini horse standing on Readily the side available. of the street after school? Like, oh, kids, uh, get your photos taken with your skirts on my horse. Uh, my my horse I named Bait. Uh, and then he, he takes the photos. He gets the photos developed and printed, and he's carrying them around going to this girl's house. Come on, like I don't know. I don't want to know what was going to happen had her dad not been home, and I'm sure she knew enough not to open the door if she was alone. Yeah, but she had to. It seemed like throughout the story, despite being a kid, her spider sense or whatever intuition was helping her out along the way. Thank God. But man, it's it's this guy. To me, I'm I'm like getting like Ch Texas Chainsaw Massacre vibes off this guy. Like, oh just yeah, on his farm with his horse. He's like, I'm gonna get the little kids to come up here. <laughs> that's that's what it's he's a creep it's not funny it it's, isn't funny. It's not funny um but it was funny to her because she she ends it with the punchline and today i would still get on a mini horse oh i always say that i'm like dalmer would have loved my stupid ass yeah like um, want to see want to see my kittens i'd be like sure <laughs> <laughs> they're in there even now i'd be like kittens there sure in your place Great. in this windowless van <laughs> Oh, man. Well, oh, I think God. this series of stories has taught us that there are creeps everywhere. They're in strip clubs in Kitchener. There are paramedics in Toronto that are at strip clubs in Kitchener. There are uh, 
uh, soliciting the services of cleaners. They're getting in car crashes. They're at restaurants in Florida. They're in Old Navy. And they're at garage sales. Is nothing sacred. Ugh. Who is your creep of the night? Who was my creep of the night? I liked, I, li I liked the, um, I didn't like the creep hair puller, but I just liked that story. I the, liked the way the victim reacted. Yeah, that was good because it was a little bit. <laughs> I like, really appreciated that. It was a bit of justice. And I think it, that story with the hair puller, it all went how it should have. If someone, if someone yes. touches your hair, you, like you're completely justified to be like, well, what the, was that all about? And, you know, and well, have that, that talk. The fool was like, what? Yeah, yeah. I'm allowed to touch people. Yeah. Specifically women. I think my creep of the night, I know it's the, the most recent one, but I think I'm going to have to go with Olivia's creep on the way home from school with the mini horse. Uh, oh. As she told the story, it played out in my mind, again, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre or something or Children of the Corn with this creepy man with a horse and for some reason a camera walking around in the tall grass waiting to find like a little girl with a skirt. Like that's, there are creeps out there. People listening, oh man, look out, look out for each other. Look out for yourselves. And for goodness sakes, if you have a creep encounter, go to nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. Use the app built in and send me and Madeline your story. And we'll include it. And who knows? We're, we're going to be going up to volume 99. I'm sure of it. Uh, I, we got a lot yeah, more like, to get By into. the end of the year. We got a lot more. Well, with, with all this talk of hair and and pedophiles, it reminds me of, do you want to hear like kind of a really creepy fact statistic okay so a lot of servers bartenders whatever um have done a little experiment and they make more money when they wear their hair in pigtails really yeah oh. and i'm like ooh, that's what is yeah what terrible. does that mean that's terrible yeah oh so just wanted to leave you with that little okay piece of info thanks <laughs> well i'm i'm my, i'm really going to be concerned if i see like a waitress somewhere with pigtails i'm like what, <laughs> what who, whose dollar are you going for well i mean as someone who used to serve i didn't know this information then but if guys want to be creepy like that i'll exploit them and take their money all is fair in love and war and service bartending <laughs> <laughs> Right, Madeline, well, thank you for another night of Creep Encounters, and thank you to all the listeners for sharing your stories. Yeah, they make us laugh at times, they make us cringe at times, but I think they always remind us to uh, keep our wits about us ourselves as we're out there. Thank you. I want to thank you for joining Madeline and I for this episode of Nighttime. I'm going to start wrapping up the episode, but before I do, I'm going to end with thanks. First, a huge and sincere thank you to everyone who's taken the time to share their creep encounters with us. As I always say, these stories serve as a great reminder to keep our eyes open and our wits about us. And to other listeners who think they have a story to share, I'm going to be doing a whole bunch more episodes in this series, and I'd love to feature your creep encounter. You can share it with Madeleine and I by going to nighttimepodcast.com contact and using the voice recorder. If you got something you want to share, Go do it now. The voice recorder is easy to use, and if you make any mistakes or misspeak, don't worry. I'll edit it and make sure you sound great before it goes to air. We're excited to hear from you. And to get to the wrap-up, let me give thanks to Monty Data, who contributes the music for this show, and LJ from the Dystopian Simulation Podcast, who provides my intro and outro voiceovers. But then lastly, but most importantly, a massive thank you goes out to each and every one of you listening to Nighttime, as without your interest and your support, this show would be as pointless as it would be impossible. Now on the topic of support, let me thank the newest subscribers to the premium feed. Corey, Cheyenne, and Carly, I appreciate you. And for anyone else who'd like to support the show, you can help us out here in a variety of ways. First of all, a premium feed subscription costs just a couple dollars a month, and that money funds the creation of new episodes. But the premium feed will also give you those new episodes two days early, give them to you ad-free, and give you access to a full back catalog of episodes. If that sounds like something you're interested in, you can go premium right now at patreon.com slash nighttimepodcast. 
And even if for whatever reason you can't go premium, you can still support the growth of this show by simply sharing this episode on social media and letting all your like-minded friends know why they should listen. Your support in this is very much appreciated. Now until next time, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, and let us know if you see anything weird. The Nighttime Podcast is written, hosted, and produced by Jordan Bonaparte.